Please read this disclaimer. This video is all the character name and all of its contents, including any opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only. And it is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional service and consultation from licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decision. And those decisions are theirs. Hey listeners welcome back to another out of world new story with revolving time. Time is a fascinating and universal concept that affects every aspect of our lives. Uncover the hidden secrets and truths. This is a story of my cheating wife cheat on me multiple time. After the first time, she'd sworn fidelity and then betrayed me again. I could divorce her, but what would that do? I wanted revenge. I hope you all enjoying this long story. Okay let's go on to the story. The questions swirled around my brain the whole week Amy was away. Should I confront her? Should I change the locks? Should I divorce her? It wouldn't be easy throwing away four years of marriage, but I wasn't going to stand for her cheating. Not when we'd worked so hard to patch things up after the first time. Not after she'd sworn up and down that it would never happen again. This hurt. Her first affair had thrown off our schedule for starting a family as we devoted months to building trust. The funny thing was that Amy had come to me and told me she'd cheated. I didn't suspect a thing and probably would never have guessed that she told me helped us get through, though it hurt like hell at the time. I remember the moment clearly. We were in the car on the way back from her mom's. Amy had been quiet at dinner, more quiet than usual, but her mom was so talkative that no awkward silences or breaks warned me something was up. Honey, you know I love you, don't you? Yeah, I do. You feeling insecure? No, I have to tell you something bad. I could see her struggling. I had an affair. It's over. It didn't last long. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I wish I could take it back. My first reaction. With whom? Why? Where? I'm glad I did because she was vulnerable at that moment so she let out a flood of information. Her friend Jesse's fiancé had been playing on her. She agreed to meet him for a drink, only to get evidence to expose him to Jesse, so she said and at least partly believed. She said she discouraged him and tried to convince him that Jesse was all he should want. A couple of weeks later, when I was traveling on business, she went to a party at Jesse's, got a little lit, and they hooked up for a quickie in Jesse's in his bed. She saw him twice more, both times at their place, before her guilt overtook her. She swore she ended it. Two months later, we went to their wedding. A month after that they moved to Chicago. I can understand how it happened. A handsome guy play on you. A guy you already know wants you. Your husband is working long hours, traveling too much. You drink some alcohol and you're on your back. I had trouble with the repeat performances. I had more trouble with him being Jesse's fiancé. It may be common that people betray their best friends, but to me that indicated a real weakness of character. How could she walk down the aisle in a bridesmaid's dress to celebrate her friend's wedding when she'd been sleeping with the groom? Things got worse between us over the next few days. I didn't want to be home. I didn't want to touch her. When I tried, I found myself thinking about how we'd been slept together while she was ducking her friend's future husband. How she'd kept that secret from me. How I'd been gullible. How I'd been the fool. I cringed at the memory of my congratulating him at the wedding. At the commentary I'd given him about what marriage is really like. After two weeks of barely speaking, Amy asked if I'd go to counseling with her. She told me she was afraid. Afraid that I'd leave her. Afraid that she'd blown it. Afraid that she'd hurt me so badly I could never forgive her. The sessions were painful. But after several months I was able to put the mess far enough behind me that our relationship was growing again. A lot came out. She mistrusted our marriage because I traveled. I was too passive in the relationship. I preferred not to discuss what was happening between us and my silences contributed to her feelings of inadequacy. It's funny how what someone else does becomes your fault. I interpreted the counseling process as the spreading of blame until it rested evenly on both our shoulders. The balance tipped back and forth for a few months as anger and denial worked themselves out. Then we apply happy medium and started once again to be happy. The part of therapy that stuck with me was the commitments we made to honesty, to trust and to earning trust, to fidelity, and to communication. I really tried. I scheduled some of my trips so she could meet me late in the week. We started working out together, just to share the extra time. If I had to work long hours, we'd meet for dinner. Now all that was gone. I'd stumbled on her cheating completely by accident. I had to send a file but my mail account was down. It was 3am and Amy was asleep. I realized I could copy the file to her laptop, connect to her work network and mail the file through her work email. I did that. The preview pane of her email was open. I just happened to glance at it as I was moving the mouse. The words you are so unbelievably sexy the sender was one of the other associates in the firm. So my first guess, though my heart was pounding, was a flirtation or maybe a teasing game. 
The rest of the email said very little, but it was suggestive of a deeper relationship. Okay, I said. This could be friendship. It could be. Don't lose your cool. I searched for the guy's name in her account. Oh shit. She'd saved dozens of emails from this guy and had sent him dozens more. I picked one at random from him. Yesterday was the absolute most amazing time of my life. You are a goddess. This was not good. I picked another, this time from her. It set up a date and said Jack will be out of town. I have to be home by 10 for his call. Another from him, you are a bad girl. And I love it. God am it all. My blood started to boil. The idea, I should kick her right now, came into my mind. I sat at the keyboard wondering if I should read all the emails. I need some time to think about this. My first thought was to forward all his emails to my account, but that would leave tracks. Instead, I laboriously copied each email onto my key drive. I tried to go to sleep but couldn't get in bed with Amy. I tried to lie down on the couch, but that felt worse, like I was being evicted by my loving, unfaithful wife from my rightful bed. I ended up slumped over the kitchen table, flipping the pages of magazines, until dawn. Then I hopped into the shower, roused Amy, told her I'd had a problem with my document which could only be fixed at the office, and left. Sitting at my desk, hours before anyone else arrived, I printed out all the emails between my wife and this guy Rob. They were a novel in letters of a 53 Chuel affair. It was obvious the affair had begun three months earlier, that it was not dying out, that she had no intention of letting it go, that it wasn't casual but as regular and often as they could make it. The best part was that Rob had a camera. He sent Amy pictures of them, mostly her bad, some taken in the mirror so you could see their faces. I had trouble looking at them. They bothered me so much. The next best part was that Rob and Amy were heading to the same conference the next week, this week, gone together Monday through Friday at a hotel in Phoenix. They talked bluntly about sleeping together for a whole night. They'd have to be careful about the time because Amy could never miss her calls with me. Those calls were part of the commitment we made to be faithful, to be open and honest. I guess commitment is only a ritual to some people. I decided not to say anything to Amy. I wanted that week while she was away to make up my own mind about what I felt and wanted. The last time, which she'd sworn would be the last time ever, she'd sprung it on me. I had no idea where a confrontation now would lead but I knew from experience it would be very difficult to think straight for a long time after. I looked at the calendar on my computer. Wednesday. All right. I've gone through anger. I've gone through denial. Time to pick a pony. What the hell do you want? The answer welled up from the deepest recesses of my mind. Revenge. I wanted revenge. She'd lied to me. She'd sworn fidelity. And then betrayed me. I had trusted her. I had invested two more years of my life in her only because I believed what she had said in counseling. Two years I would never get back. I could divorce her, but what would that do? For all I knew, she was only staying with me out of guilt or a strange sense of loyalty. Maybe she couldn't leave me because she'd committed to stay with me. If we divorced, she'd get half of not very much. She'd still be a lawyer, still be an attractive choice for another man. I wanted to ruin her, to crush her hopes and dreams. I thought about hiring someone to kick her. I considered a range of violent options, but each ended with me as a monster facing a minimum of 35 years to life without parole. So I try find other way. My nightly check and call went smoothly. I was becoming a good actor, pretending to be happy I'll be a great actor. I'll set her up and then destroy her. Now the trick would be to come up with the right plan, something genuinely clever. They say that God is in the details. Well then, so is the devil. It's not easy to come up with a convincing plot that won't give you away, that you can carry off. I realized I can only work with what I know. I know computers. The temptation is to do something completely out of my realm in the hope that distance will cast less suspicion on me. Through a roundabout, very hard to trace method, I set up a web account which drew on servers located in other country. I set up a website, nothing creative. It took a couple of weeks to get the account and work out the rest. During this time, I worked on my acting skills. Honey, I sighed. Your being away made me think about our relationship. Amy was lying next to me in bed. MMMMM, she murmured. I've been thinking that maybe we should have a baby. Amy perked up. Not right now, but maybe we should start trying in a few months. Amy's hand caressed my chest. She lifted her head so she could look into my eyes. That's a great idea. I've been wanting to bring up the baby subject but I was worried you that we weren't ready. I smiled a perfect, loving, lying smile. I think I'm there. You've been everything I could hope for. I ran my hand up and down her arm cupping her elbow. You've been open and loving and I really feel that you've been completely committed to me. Amy dipped her head, as if embarrassed at the praise. I continued, I think we should talk about this some more, see how it feels, make sure it's the right choice. Not long, maybe a month or two. Amy leaned forward and kissed me. 
Like I said, acting is fun. We talked it about having a baby. I wanted her to make the right decision, which meant understanding the effect it would have on her career, on our relationship, on our ability to take vacations. Update. Once my website was ready, it was decision time to go through with my plan or not. I decided to check her email again to see if she and Rob were still at it or if things had cooled with the baby talk. I waited until Amy was asleep. I roused her laptop, logged into her work network and checked her inbox. Nothing unusual. Nothing from Rob. I ran a search and lo and behold, there my wife was, right there in her own words. Baby, you know I are probably going to get pregnant soon. Get the baby now. After I go off the pill, we'll have to cool it when I'm ovulating. Don't worry, baby, I'll be using a basal thermometer to tell me when the little egg drops, so we won't suffer too much. Rob wrote back, we can test condoms. Operation Revenge went in motion. Amy and I had a romantic Friday night dinner at her favorite restaurant. As we waited for coffee, I held her hand and lovingly said, I think we should go for it. I nodded meaningfully. Amy's face lit up. She gulped. She reached toward me with her free hand. I so much want a baby. Thank you. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. We agreed that she'd go off the pill when her next cycle came around. She could be fertile within a month. Little did she know that Monday morning she'd be visited by some very bad guys or hackers trying to look hard. My site had a nice front page showing. Amy playing with something. Her face blurred. Real wife having on real playing. I tried a dozen different typos but that one felt right. It was a title I could write in. Real wife having good playing with lover not her own man. Cheating wife must pay. My favorite line. More than a little ridiculous, isn't it? My first concern was getting the message to Amy. I spoofed an email address from a business contact. To get it in front of Amy's eyes, the subject line read I know about you and Rob. I sent the message through a server that provides anonymity, worried about the FBI might be able to trace it back to me. On Saturday, I looked forward to the ending of a weekend. I was glad not to be home. The time waiting helped me prepare for what I hoped would be a terrific performance. My plan was if she was in tears, begging for forgiveness. Well, I decided not to play out the alternatives. Her car is in the garage. The lights are on. Let's see which Amy is home. Hey, honey, I yelled. No answer. Amy was in the kitchen. An open bottle of wine next to her on the kitchen. I saw it was already half empty. Bingo. Starting early. I asked. Amy shook her head. I had a very bad day. I assumed the supportive husband role. Aw baby, that's too bad. I put my arms around her. Turn around and I'll rub your neck. I massaged her shoulders. My intention was to get laid while she was a wreck. Amy tried to pull away. I wasn't letting her off that easy. Come on, babe. It'll take your mind off things. I pulled her to me again. I kissed her neck. Besides, thinking about having a baby with you. Dot dot dot. Amy looked like she'd been hit by thunder. Amy didn't seem aware of what was happening. Yeah, baby, let's take your mind off your troubles. Hungry? I asked. As I ate a cheese sandwich, I thought that, yes, it was possible my message had not been received, that Amy had merely had a bad day at work. The only way to know would be to unleash part two of Operation Revenge. I went to bed, to sleep next to my cheating wife. Tuesday's email contained more explicit instructions. My email and her parents' email were included. I don't want to think I was growing overconfident. I wanted Amy to think she might get off easy. I wanted to drag out her pain. That is the point of revenge, to inflict as much hurt as possible. Her heart pounding when she opened the email. Do I tell Jack? Do I pay? If I pay, they'll only want more but if I don't pay. Maybe, maybe, what should I do? I checked the website several times during the day and discovered that she paid the $500 for remove her photos. At 3.10 in the afternoon, I imagined her tumbling over the possibilities for most of the day, agonizing over what to do. Amazing, just amazing I thought. This is actually working. Perhaps the most gratifying part of executing a plan is seeing what you imagine actually taking shape. While revenge is the goal, planning and execution have lives of their own. Tuesday night was not a repeat of Monday. When Amy got home, I wanted to see her mood. I greeted her at the door and, for my trouble, received a huge hug and a smoldering kiss. Her happiness was palpable, though a little forced. After all, she'd paid but didn't know if her blackmailers would keep their word. Amy is a wonderful courtesan. She's intelligent, makes good conversation and has interesting opinions. We made dinner together, flirting, taking food from each other, playing like lovers. She thanked me for taking her out of her bad mood, and so vividly. Ah, this is the life. Later, we lay together in bed talking about getting pregnant. Her pill cycle would end in a few days, which meant two to three weeks before she might be fertile. I can't wait. I love you with all my heart, Amy said. I thinking about Amy's betrayal. 
and the context that we'd been through this before, that we were thinking of having a baby. Did I really need revenge? I thought about this on my daily run. Anger. Hurt. Should I turn the other cheek after making her suffer? Wouldn't the more manly choice be to divorce her and walk away? The answer shocked me as it welled out of the depths of my soul. I wanted to inflict pain. I wanted to humiliate her. I had no desire to change her into a genuinely faithful wife and mother. I wanted to wreck her life in a way that would stick with her until her dying day. And I wanted her never to know it was me, so she'd always feel completely that I'd been the innocent victim, that she'd lost me and the family we'd been planning. So what am I? I asked myself. I'm a man. I shook myself hard. I'm a man. I said aloud. I want revenge. I want to hurt somebody. I want to get in a fight and leave some bass. Moaning in pain. I yanked the car door shut and started the engine. Amy was going down. Wednesday. Thursday. Nothing. I set it up for Friday. A horrible email. We'd have two whole weekend days to enjoy the mess. $10,000. 500 she could hide. Spread out over time, she could hide a lot. But 10,000 in one fell swoop. Uh, due by noon her time on Monday. Or else, I wanted to force Amy to tell me. Oh Jack, I'm such an ungrateful soul who doesn't deserve you. I've lied and cheated. I'm a worthless. True, but I didn't expect quite that conversation. A brave man dies once but a coward dies a thousand deaths. Amy called me at 11 in the morning. I knew when her office number flashed on my caller ID. Putting aside the compulsion to let her go into voicemail, I answered, Hey babe, what's up? I need to see you right away. She sounded serious. I was instantly alarmed. Are you alright? Are you okay? Please, she paused. I thought I heard her sob. Please, meet me at home as soon as you can. Rather than rush home, I drove around for an extra 10 minutes, listening to loud music. She was waiting at the door. She looked bad. I was concerned. What's wrong? I tried to put my arms around her, but she held me off. She was crying. Her hands were shaking. I grew calm. Here was my wife, my beloved, about to confess to cheating, to having pictures taken of her ducking another man, to being blackmailed, and I was furious but calm. I could see my hands around her neck, screaming give me back those two years. Give me back my life, you cheating dot dot dot. Instead, I grabbed her trembling hands and reassured her, whatever it is, you know I love you. That nearly kicked her. Then she ran in the direction of the bedroom. I went into the kitchen, refilled the glass. I took the water to the bedroom. Amy was lying face down on the bed, her back heaving. I sat next to her, rested my hand on her back and offered her the water. She shook her head. I had decided to play strong and silent. Let her carry the dialogue. I raised my hand to acknowledge her feelings. I'm a terrible person. She placed her hand on my arm. I'm strong and silent. I shake my head to indicate no, she's a wonderful person. She obviously needed a prompter to get her off that line. Now why do you say that? She began. There are pictures of me. With someone. Someone not you. Pictures. You mean. Amy nodded. You never told me there were pictures. She dropped her head. As in a couple of days ago. I am a good actor. I shook my head, indicating disbelief. Amy. Who was it? Who? She only cried harder. I dropped my mask of concern and dispassionately watched her. Thou shall reap what thou sows. I left the room. I was sitting at the kitchen table, sipping a single malt scotch when Amy came in. She gingerly sat opposite me. You'll never forgive me, she said. I snorted. After you promised. Do you want me to leave? She asked. I almost exploded. No, I want you to tell me why. I want you tell me why you lied to me. I want you to tell me what I did wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm so ashamed. She put her head in her hands and began to cry again. She told me his name only when I asked specifically for it. He's married. I could see Amy clearly in those minutes and the understanding swept through me that I knew her motivation for the affair better than she did. She was an actress. She wanted to act, needed to act. Managing an affair while keeping a happy marriage was, to her, an irresistible acting challenge. She was trying to act out a double life, as 53x toy and faithful wife, as a great mistress and great wife. She would one day be the perfect mother and a soul on the side. She was still acting. Hoping against hope that she could pull off an Oscar-winning performance that would keep me. Had she never played out in her head the consequences of failure. She kept talking, now praising me and bemoaning how she had hurt me. I could see it all. She loved me. She had fallen, like Adam and Eve, into a state of sin. Eve ate the apple but the knowledge contained in the apple ate Eve. I had no doubt that Amy had fallen step by step into the affair, from friendship and flirtation shaped by his need to run from grief and her unspoken fears about my willingness to start a family with her, and then to contact and then to more, and then to more. Until Amy was playing the role, acting the part, without ever realizing that the role had eaten her. Final update. 
I saw Amy's frailty and felt a great kinship with her, not as husband and wife, not as lover to lover, but as people trapped in this endless cycle in which we have knowledge but lack wisdom, in which we have urges and the will to resist but not the strength to succeed. Amy had done the best she could to paper over the crime. Why are you telling me this now? I asked. The pictures. I'm. She couldn't go on. I realized she'd started by mentioning the pictures but hadn't explained them. What are these pictures? Pictures of me doing it. I was visibly angry. Pictures of my woman. That would make any man's blood boil. Are you out of your mind? I snapped. What the duck were you thinking? This was the nightmare at the end of her dream rainbow. She told me it was his idea. The pictures turned him on. I already knew that from their emails. My target was elsewhere. Is he threatening you? Is that what this is? I grew indignant. She was trash but she was still my wife. Is he threatening you with those pictures? Amy shook her head. She had no choice but to speak. I'm being blackmailed. I received an email. It threatened me. Told me to go to a website. I did. It had pictures of me with my face. Not clear. Pictures of me. You know. They told me to pay or else they'd tell everyone. They had addresses from my contacts list. His face is in the pictures. His wife will see them. Everyone we work with. She looked at me. He almost had a heart attack when I told him. He kept saying his wife would divorce him, that he'd lose everything. I snorted. You mean they were digital? I was incredulous. Amy waved her hand yes. You stupid. I trailed off. Don't you know? Obviously you don't know. I said with special emphasis that digital files can be searched. Your mail is on your servers. A good hacker who gets into your network can search for image files. Silence. I waited, pondering the problem. If it wasn't your boyfriend, I spit on that last word. Anyone could have picked up a password or cracked one. Maybe somebody left their laptop on. Or maybe somebody wrote down the password and lost the paper. If it was a hacker, they could have searched for image files and then narrowed in on your account. They didn't threaten him, did they? No, who knows? He sent the pictures to you, right? So they were also attached to his emails and they could have cracked his account. What am I going to do? Amy half asked, half pleaded. You haven't told me what's going on. They wanted $500 and said if I paid they'd take my pictures off their website. $500? You've got to be kidding. What is this website? I showed exasperation. Let me see. Maybe I can figure out what's happening. She told me the site's name and I went to my computer and tried that name. I also googled it. Nothing. There's no site by that name, I yelled to her. Did they give you a URL or was there a link to click on? I asked. A link. Probably some made-up name. Can you get the email? Amy got her laptop from her briefcase, put it on her desk and logged into her work email account. Forward that email to me. No, that will probably turn the link into text. Let me see. I leaned over her desk. I opened a new email, addressed it to myself and then copied the threatening email with its link into that email. I sent it and went back to my desk. The email arrived a minute later. I opened it and clicked the link. Amy was behind me. When the words blackmailed wives appeared on screen, I threw a glance over my shoulder and Amy moved involuntarily backward. I made a show of reading the text. Who the duck are these stupid? Did you pay them yet? I paid them $500 Amy replied. How? I charged it on Visa. There's a credit card link. I went through the site more thoroughly. Your picture isn't here. They said they'd take it down if I paid. I looked at her. Come on, tell me why you're confessing. Tell me, don't make me force it out of you. This morning, Amy turned away, they sent me. They threatened me again. If I don't pay them $10,000 by Monday, they'll send the pictures to everyone. My God, is that true? Amy nodded. She suddenly broke down. I've ruined everything. I can't believe this is happening. She plopped down on the floor. This isn't how I wanted my life to turn out. You know what I'm going to do. Speaking sweetly. No, I'm going to divorce you. That's what I'm going to do. Amy cried. What do you say? You reap what you sow, baby. All good things come to an end. Are you going to pay? I asked. I don't know what to do. She lifted her head. I've lost you. What should I do? They asked for how much? $10,000. They'll never stop. I know, she said. I wouldn't care if I still had you. Friday afternoon slipped into evening. I fell asleep. When I woke, Amy was in the den, staring at her computer. I can't pay, Amy said. I just can't. I grunted. I expected that. $10,000 is a lot of money to splash out with no guarantee. Maybe they're bluffing, she continued. If I tell everyone I know about the pictures, it would be just like they were sent. Amy, I can't believe you did this. We were going to try for a baby. I don't know if I'll ever get over this. When Monday morning arrived, the final phase of Operation Revenge was ready. An email with all the pictures and a selection of the worst of the 53x talk. I didn't hesitate. 
I sent it to everyone in her contacts list, including all her family, friends and business associates. I didn't even wait until noon. I packed my things and loaded them into my car. Some people might imagine remaining on the scene to gloat, but watching Amy struggle with the consequences would only make me sad. We could no longer pretend the world outside was the illusion. It was time to make my exit. Amy's life fell apart. She had to quit her job. She was humiliated professionally and socially. People laughed at her and some turned their backs, but most were fairly sympathetic. Love is complicated. I loved Amy and she loved me, but she wasn't able to control herself and that meant we couldn't stay married. Divorce was in process. I worried about her getting pregnant to trap me. Divorce became final. We didn't have much stuff to divvy. We sold the condo and split the money. Amy repeated what she'd said before. If I had you, I wouldn't care about the rest. She couldn't have me. To be honest, we stayed in touch. Her lover had a worse time. His wife couldn't forgive him for humiliating himself professionally. She took him to the cleaners. I felt no sympathy for the guy. Amy and I started to grow apart when I met the girl I later married. We both had trouble maintaining a relationship with my being happy with another woman. Amy sent me a note when she got married again. She said she still loved me. I haven't talked to her in years. To be honest, I don't care what she's doing. Pillar and I have two kids, ages 3 and 5, and we're having a good time working on making number 3. Pillar knows everything about me. She knows the whole story of what happened with Amy. She knows I'll kick her if she cheats on me and I know she'll do even worse to me if I ever cheat on her. I'm trying to say that you have to keep revenge in perspective. Don't let your desire for revenge become an obsession. Taking revenge on Amy made me a stronger and I think a better person. I have visited the dark well of pain and climbed back up to the daylight. I have felt the raging fury which seeds in my soul. Now when I hold my precious little girls, I know the total encompassing beauty of unconditional love. Opus Reaction If our sick society has taught me anything it's that public humiliation is not necessarily fatal. Amy wasn't someone you naturally hate. People laughed at her and some turned their backs, but most were fairly sympathetic. We've become inured to scandal. I have a theory that we don't crack down on drunk drivers because each of us is afraid we'll get stopped coming home from a barbecue or a cocktail party while a little tipsy. We let drunks kill thousands every year for the selfish reason that almost all of us at some point may have a drink or two and drive. Scandals, especially 53x scandals, are following the same path. What if it's me? It could be anyone I know. My daughter, God forbid. My sister. Well, she was a little wild in college. My wife. You take a few pictures, store them on your computer and years later they may pop up on the internet. The end. Thank you for joining us on Revolving Time, where we bring you real life stories that explore the complexities of the human experience. We hope that our stories have provided you with insights, inspiration, and a renewed appreciation for the power of human resilience. We believe that storytelling has the power to create understanding and empathy, and we are committed to continuing to share stories that challenge and expand our understanding of the world. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel and stay connected with our community. By subscribing, you will be the first to know about new stories and events, and you'll have access to a library of inspiring content. Thank you for being a part of our journey, and we look forward to sharing more powerful stories with you in the future.